What's up everybody? Let's go ahead and jump into this introductory lesson on slope. Now what makes a roller coaster fun is that you are constantly changing direction whether you're increasing or decreasing at different levels of steepness. And we are going to relate this experience to our understanding of the slopes of lines on the coordinate plane. So we are going to think of the slope of a line as its direction and its level of steepness. Now portions of a roller coaster with a low amount of steepness result in a slow and gradual change in elevation. While the sections that are very steep result in a rapid change in elevation. So as long as you're not feeling too nauseous, let's go ahead and extend this thinking to our understanding of the slopes of lines. Now in this lesson, we're going to discuss two types of slope, positive and negative. Now positive slopes increase from left to right, while negative slopes decrease from left to right. We will also be referring to slope in terms of what we call rise over run. So we have a line with points on the line. Now the rise is going to represent how many units up or down we have to move. And the run is going to be how many units left or right we have to move in order to move from point to point. And it kind of makes this staircase image. Now notice that since this line has a positive slope, our rise was upwards and our run was to the right to move from point to point. However, if our line has a negative slope, that is it decreases from left to right, when we rise, we rise downwards. I know that sounds weird, but we're rising in a downwards direction and then running over to the right to move from point to point. So let's take a few moments to visualize the difference between applying rise over run to positive and negative slopes. Again, notice that the line with the positive slope is increasing from left to right, and that the line with the negative slope is decreasing from left to right. Now we can go ahead and take a look at a line on the coordinate plane. Now we want to find the slope of this line in terms of rise over run. So our slope is going to be expressed as a fraction of two numbers. So our rise is the amount of change we go vertically. Our run is the amount of change we have horizontally as we move from point to point. Now this is a positive slope, we can tell by looking at it, it increases from left to right. And we're going to start with the two farthest points away from each other. So we'll start by counting the rise, the number of units that we are increasing, and then the run, the amount of units that we're moving horizontally, again, to make this staircase shape. If we count the number of units upward, we rose 12, and then our run was 18 units to the right. So we can express our slope as positive 12 over 18. However, 12 over 18 can be simplified. We divide those both by 2, we get 6 over 9. That means that if I start from the same point and this time rise 6 units and then run to the right 9 units, I'll still end up on the line. It's a different point. So this is a more simplified slope, but if I repeat that by rising 6 and running over to the right 9, I do end up in the same spot. So when we find the slope of a line, we always want it in the most reduced form possible. Now 6 over 9 is smaller than 12 over 18, but that can actually be reduced again. 6 over 9 is equivalent to 2 over 3. Now we notice that if we start again at that same point, rise up 2 units, run to the right 3 units, we end up at another point, and this time it's the closest point. And if we continue that pattern by rising 2 and running to the right 3, we're slowly building that staircase, but we're also landing on a point on the line each time. So the most reduced form of the slope of this line is positive 2, over 3. Now again, that doesn't mean that the other two slopes, the 12 over 18 and the 6 over 9 were incorrect, they just weren't in reduced form. But all three of the slopes that we looked at will take you from one point on the line to another point on the line. So here's our first example. We want to find the slope of the line that passes through the given points that are shown on the graph here. Now we know that slope is rise over run, so we want to find the rise over run between those two points. So let's go ahead and build our staircase. This line has a positive slope, so I'm going to rise up a certain number of units and then run over to the right to get from point to point and then count. My rise is 6 and my run is 3. Now I'm almost done, but 6 over 3 can be reduced. 
because 6 divided by 3 equals 2. And we want to think of slope as a fraction in terms of rise over run. So we're going to express it as 2 over 1. So if we go back to the starting point, if we rise two units up and run to the right one, we end up on the line again. And if we continue this rise over run of up two and going over to the right one and building that staircase, we continue to land on points that are on the line. So the slope of this line in reduced form is two over one, which we are just going to express as two, since two over one means two divided by one, which just equals two. This last example is just like the last one, except now we're dealing with a different line. Now notice that this line decreases from left to right, so its slope will be negative. So now we want to find rise over run between those two given points. Since the slope is negative, we rise downward, and then we run to the right to make that staircase image. And then we can just count. So the rise downward was 3 units, and the run to the right was 8 units. So the slope of this line is negative 3 over 8 which cannot be reduced, so that's going to be our final answer, the slope of this line. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for checking us out. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more free animated math lessons updated every week.